So the Suzuki TU250X. Oh crap. Much better. So is the Suzuki TU250X the best beginner motorcycle out there? Well it can be and it's definitely one of my top picks. So give me a few minutes and let's talk about it. What's up everyone? It's Alex. So the Suzuki TU250X. I did an honest review on this thing a while back. It's one of the most popular videos on the channel and I still get tons of interest every single day in the TU250X from Suzuki. And I have to believe that a lot of that interest is coming from beginners, but also it can be a really great motorcycle for someone who's not a beginner for some of the same reasons that a Bolt or an R3 or a lot of those kind of motorcycles can also be. So I thought I would take a couple minutes today and just talk to you for a few minutes about why these things are with the TU250X. Real quick, if you like the video or if you're new here, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff because it tells me you like the video, it tells me to keep making this kind of stuff for you guys. So the Suzuki TU250X, let's get a little bit deeper into it than my last review. So what you have with the TU250X is a just under 250cc, like 249 or whatever, under 250cc, air-cooled, fuel-injected single-cylinder engine, matched up to a 5-speed transmission and a chain final drive. Very, very much set up, straight, classic, standard as it gets motorcycle. Obviously designed and modeled after a classic Japanese standard type of motorcycle, but in kind of like a little bit of a smaller size, and with the fuel injection, bringing it more into like a modern technology kind of a standpoint. With brakes and suspension that are adequate enough, but match the kind of like more price point, beginner, basic kind of stuff. So you're not gonna get super fancy suspension and brakes or anything with the TU250. That's not what it's going for. Suzuki was very much aiming for the beginner market with it, and very much wanted to do just a classic, standard, super easy to understand, super easy to deal with, super easy to handle, but not ultra expensive beginner motorcycle that also wasn't quite as underwhelming or small and diminutive as like a 250 Rebel or their own GZ250 was before that, or bikes like that. The problem with your 250cc cruisers is they tended to just be physically too small and too underpowered to where most people after having it for a couple months or something were just absolutely sick and tired of it had to have a bigger motorcycle. With the TU250X, Suzuki was going for a 250 to be easy, but slightly taller, physically just feels a little bit bigger, and is a little bit quicker and keeps people happier longer. And because of the way it's set up, it actually to me, and for most beginners I've put on one, is actually easier to handle and easier to get used to than something like a 250 Rebel or GZ250 or V-Star 250 or any of those bikes was because of the standard seating position and because you're not as cramped up and tiny on it. The Rebels and stuff could actually be kind of hard to handle because they're so physically damn small. Whereas a TU250 has that easy, comfortable, lower power for a beginner, but feels a little bit better, handles a little bit better, and is actually easier all around for most people to get used to. And because of the way it's set up, it's so infinitely customizable and changeable to your liking that a lot of advanced riders and experienced riders really like having one as a secondary bike, just like an R3 or a Bolt or a Z400 or an MT-03 or insert any number of small motorcycles here or a Grom for that matter. A lot of advanced people like having these kind of bikes because you can change it up and you can make it a lot of fun. And as we've discussed before, it's a lot more fun to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow, right? So the TU250, while it is set up to be easy and understandable for beginners, that ease and understandability and basicness of it and infinite customizability because it's such a standard blank slate kind of a motorcycle also makes it very popular for advanced riders. So the thing only puts out like somewhere around 16 horsepower and like 12 pounds of torque, making it really, really easy to get used to. But that's just enough where with the right changes and everything, an experienced rider can have a ton of fun with that motorcycle. As far as the customizability goes, some of the coolest things I've ever seen are people taking like a TU250, doing a completely different seat pan on it, a cafe cowl on the back of it, putting down clip on or club style bars on the front of it, fly screens. I've seen people use TU250s for crazy little 250 race series and stuff, like a 250 classic race series. That is hella fun, man. You can do that on a track, or if you have a big enough parking lot, even like a cone course, you could use it like mini bike racing, but on like a cone course or something. So much fun, so much fun. But if you want like that Grom or small motorcycle, or like you advanced guys that like the R3s a lot, the TU250X to me is the same kind of fun for an advanced rider as the R3 is 
but in like the classic standard. Instead of being like a mini sport bike to throw around, it's like having a classic standard to throw around. Does that make sense? The cafe builds though, amazing. Some of them look absolutely gorgeous and they look like so much fun because it's so light and throw around and just don't care, you know? As far as the reliability goes, they've been out long enough now that they have built a proven track record for reliability. Suzuki TU250, I mean, it's as basic as it gets. There's really not that much to break, and Suzuki built the thing really, 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 really well. It's a bulletproof, reliable little motorcycle. It also gets an insane amount of fuel economy to it, and they've been out long enough now, you can find them used for super, super reasonable. So just the fact that it's a 250cc motorcycle with the same understandable, easy power delivery we've come to expect from beginner bikes, with a little bit more leg room, a little bit more room to grow with it, and that infinite customizability, plus fuel economy, plus they're inexpensive, even brand new, they're not that expensive, but used, they're really, really inexpensive. And it just, the bike oozes style and quality for what it is, plus ease of maintenance, and they fuel injected it to get rid of the biggest complaint that most people have with a lot of your more traditional standard little beginner bikes, which is a lot of beginners don't want to deal with a carburetor. Take all of those things together. It's very easy to see why the TU250X is so popular as a beginner motorcycle right now, and also with a cult following in advanced riders. I would love to have one as well. It'd be a really cool little mini cafe. I mean, I already have a cafe bike, so I don't need another one, but it'd be a really, really cool mini cafe. And if there were a 250cc cafe class near me, you damn well bet I would be doing something. Whether it's a TU250 or something, I would be doing a 250 cafe build so I can go put on my crazy bubble helmet and just go ham on a mini cafe series. So all in all, I think the TU250X is an incredible choice for a beginner motorcycle at this point if you don't want a sport bike. That's going to be the caveat. I think if you want a sport bike, almost any of the small CC sport bikes at this point are incredible choices. Obviously, I love the R3 for that choice. If you want naked, the MT-03, the Z400, the CB300 series, Kawasaki Ninja 300s, Ninja 400s, CBR 300s, the list goes on. All of those small sport bikes at this point are amazing choices, just depending on your preference. My favorite would be the R3 or the MT-03, but your mileage may vary. But I think if you want to begin a motorcycle at this point and you don't want a sport bike, the TU250X, objectively speaking, is probably the absolute best choice you can make because it's physically a little bit bigger than a Grom or something. It's going to get you a little bit more usability overall as a beginner motorcycle than a Grom because the Grom is actually so small that for a lot of beginners, it's a little bit tricky. And it's so small for a lot of beginners, it's not quite fast enough for them. Whereas a TU250 tops out more like 75 miles an hour instead of like a base stock ROM more like 55-ish. So I think it's even better than those. Obviously with it being fuel injected and also inexpensive now, it's gonna really beat out any of the carbureted 250s, et cetera, that you would find at this point. Now you can find those cheaper, but if you can get a TU250, it's fuel injected, which for a beginner can make all the difference in the world, to be honest with you. So at this point, if you do not want a sport bike, I do think the TU250X is probably the bang for your buck all around best beginner motorcycle you can possibly get your hands on at this point for absolute beginners and is an incredibly fun choice for advanced riders. I can't say enough good things about it. I keep coming back to it. And some of these bikes that I keep coming back to, I keep coming back to them for a reason. These bikes are getting popular and have been popular for a reason for beginners and advanced riders, okay? I hope that explains it. I hope that helps. As always, have a great day. Ride safe. I'm Alex. Peace.